السلام عليكم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ولا So it has been a long time I miss you guys I wish you miss me the same way بارك الله فيك جزاك الله خير So before we start إن شاء الله stand up جزاك الله خير take a deep breath please stretch Make sure you don't break someone's nose. And now turn to your right and give the person to your right a hug. Okay. Marshall is hugging himself. So please, Jazakallah, sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Jazakallah. So now, today, inshallah, we'll talk about the concept of bullying. I'm going to talk about bullying in general, then we will talk about uh, bullying in schools, right? Especially among students. So basically, bullying is becoming very uh, dominant in schools today. And from what I have read, one out of four students reported they have been bullied at some point uh, during the school year. And sometimes the number is one in three is bullied for different reasons. We'll talk about this. Maybe because you look different, you come from another country, uh, you know, some people, yeah. So some people look like a minority. So if someone, for example, comes from a different <coughs> culture, they look Asian, they look African, and in some places because the concept is, uh, you know, uh, white people, for example, are acceptable in a certain, you know, setting, Everyone else is a minority and people start picking on them and so on and so forth. So this is just one, uh, one example. Uh, maybe someone of another uh, race will pick on white people, for example. Uh, so this is totally unacceptable Islamically. Uh, some people will pick on other people for whatever reason, because they, they are younger. The person is, for example, uh, you know, is perceived as physically uh, smaller, for example, so they're going to, you know, pick on them. Uh, people will pick on others for, say, for example, their uh, physical disability, for example. Someone is physically challenged or mentally challenged and people will pick on them for different reasons. Uh, we had bullying growing up. Like, when I was in Egypt, I was bullied, right, for whatever reason. But now it is far worse. And the reason is, back then, when this guy in third grade bullied me, no one knew about it except this guy and myself. But now if they bully you, in some cases, you know, some other kids, they will stream you live on Facebook and you become famous. The video will go viral and you become famous uh, in a negative way. So say for example, even if you go to South Africa or you go to China for vacation, so people will stop you on the, on the, on the way. Can I get your uh, autograph here because I saw the guy who was bullying you in, in school, right? So, terrible. And we have seen videos of kids who are being bullied, you know, they uh, call you names, uh, you're ugly, you're an idiot, they call you different names. And there was another video, the guy, they, they, uh, they hung the guy by his clothes in the gym. Like they took him by his clothes and they hung him in the gym, right? And they were making fun of him, and they were laughing at him, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so now it is, it is terrible, and there are some terrible consequences because of this. Because, you know, the students who get bullied, they have a sense of shame, that they are worthless. You know, uh, people have no respect for them, and sometimes the consequences are destructive. Uh, again, bullying comes in different forms and different levels. So, say for example, on the uh, political level, uh, superpowers in the world, big co countries, they bully smaller countries. You have to buy certain things from us, you have to buy weapons from us, and if you don't behave in a certain way or support your actions, we're going to, you know, fix you up. Bully. Uh, tribes, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi even before the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they were bullying one another. Because one tribe is stronger, they bully one another and so on and so forth yes bro i don't think that's considered bullying i think there's like i think that's like that's a bigger like a bigger version 
Yeah. So there are different levels of, of bullying. So uh, on the country level, on the child level, and on the individual level, and this includes, for example, students. And, and I'm going to give you different examples. Uh, so say, for example, uh, a guy owes his wife money. Yes, a guy owes his wife money. Mom, like when someone marries a sister, uh, he will offer her a mom. Like the marriage gift, right? And now, after some time, they are not happy together, and he wants, you know, they want to get separated. But this guy, he doesn't want to pay his wife, her mom, 5000 10000 So what he does, basically, Yeah, so inshallah the focus would be on uh, individual bullying. We're not going to talk about political bullying or tribal bullying and so on and so forth. So if this guy is married to this woman and, you know, he wants to like get rid of her and marry someone else, but he doesn't want to give her her rights, Islamic rights, like mahr and nafaqa and so on and so forth. So what he does, he will intimidate his wife. He will make her life a living hell. So in this case, she will go to the judge or she will go to the imam and say, I want to get a divorce and I don't need anything from this guy. I, I just want to survive. Just take whatever you want and I, I, I just want a divorce, right? In Islam, this is haram, this is dhul. But this is a type of bullying. He's bullying his wife, right? Uh, there is also academic bullying. Uh, I, I know some friends, uh, you know, in college, because they, uh, they're doing their higher studies, they're getting their master's or PhD, and they are supervised by a professor or a number of professors. So the professor will tell him, you know, would you please take this and translate it for me, or write this paper for me. Not for the student, but it's going to be under the name of the professor. And the students, and the student, they want to, you know, to focus on their own paper, so they will pass, but because the, the professor has the authority, so they take advantage of the student and they have them do work for them that they should receive a payment for and they do it for free. And if they protest, they're going to fail them. You're not going to get your degree. You're going to fail. So the intimidate, this is a type of bullying. This is academic, scholarly bullying and so on and so forth. And if you look at the Quran, the way the Prophet was treated by yani, uh, some of the kuffar of his time, they were bullying the Prophet uh, and they tried different ways. They offered him money, and, and they tried to bully him physically, like, you know, beat him and put <coughs> garbage on his back when he was making salah. And Fir'aun was a bully. Yes, brother? Why did they offer him money? They tried different techniques to stop him from preaching the message of Islam, right? So they first said, okay, do you want money? So we give you money like a bribe, so you stop preaching the message. He refused. They said, okay, would you like to become king over us? We'll make you king, but stop. So the Prophet ﷺ refused. You know the rest of the story. Then, bribes didn't work, so now the last resort for them was to attack the Prophet ﷺ. They put garbage on his back when he was praying. You know, they, they, uh, in one case, they got the insides of uh, you know, a, a sheep and they put it on his back while he was praying. They tried to kill him and, and so on and so forth. This is intimidation and bullying. The last example before we start, inshallah, and focus on uh, students. The example of Fir'aun. Fir'aun was a bully, right? And this is how he behaved towards Musa alayhi salam, right? So when Musa alayhi salam came with the message, he said, no. Uh, he said, you know, you know the story. Fir'aun was killing the children of Bani Israel, right? The people of Musa. And Musa السلام, killed the man by mistake. So when Musa came to invite uh, Fir'aun to Islam, he said, don't you remember you killed one of us? Well, Fir'aun was killing thousands of them, intentionally, like on purpose. And when Musa السلام, killed someone by mistake, he called him a killer for just killing one person by mistake. And he called Musa name calling, he called him uh, a, a magician, he called him a liar. 
Although Pharaoh himself was the master liar and he was the chief magician, the, the head of the magicians and so on and so forth. So as I said, I experienced, personally, I experienced bullying when I was growing up in school, grade three, and even in college, I'll have to tell you this story. Uh, so basically, I used to make poetry in Arabic. Uh, those of you who speak Arabic, they would appreciate uh, uh, this story. So basically, I was in college, and there was this big guy, his name is Haytham, we're friends. Uh, we used to be friends, but now he is one place, I'm in a different place. So basically, we were in the dorm in college, and, and he was basically, because he was a big guy, he had big muscles, and he was bullying other, you know, people in the dorm. I used to make poetry, and I used to, uh, you know, criticize people. I used to criticize teachers, students. It, it could be a form of bullying, but I was using my artistic license to correct people, right? So basically what I said, I, I, uh, I wrote two lines of poetry and I put, put it on his uh, dorm room. And they went something like this. Uh, so I called him horrible things, uh, basically. I, t I called him a terrible guy, I called him a bully, a terrible... You know, get out of here and all that stuff. Then he knew that it was me because of the poetic, uh, you know, whatever genius. And he said, okay, come here, hero, come. I'm a short guy, he's a big guy, you know. So, you know, all the time I'm going for lunch, he would bully me. I'm going for Salah, he was bullying me. Like, you know, if you look at us, he was like Muhammad Ali. And I was just like this uh, brother here. Your name again? Amr. I was just like Amr and he was like Muhammad Ali, like this. So at the end, you know, I didn't know what to do. There was no support system back then. And he said, you, you said those two lines of poetry and people are making fun of me and criticizing me and, and stuff. So I said, okay, what do you think I should do? Hercules. He said, basically, change the two lines of poetry and say something nice. I will leave you alone. I said, okay. Then I changed the two lines, same rhyme. And we hugged and we became friends and everything is good. Alhamdulillah. So now, now, this is the, the ending was good. The, you know, happy ending, Alhamdulillah. We became friends. So basically, uh, bullying happens all the time. And I said it takes different forms. It could be name calling, they call you this name, that name, and so on and so forth. It could be physical, they come, you're there in the break and they come, they slap you in the face, they push you on the floor, like, what happened, you know? Or cyber bullying, right? So they, uh, mashallah, they take, everyone has a, a camera now, they take video of you, they post it on Facebook, live streaming, and mashallah, you're screaming, you're crying and they stream it on Facebook, right? This is like international disgrace, right? It, it goes viral. And, and this is cyberbullying and so on and so forth. And of course, tags like they send you emails, messages, threatening you and so on and so forth. So it is that bad. And we're going to talk about the consequences at the end. Uh, some of the consequences are minor, like kids refusing to go to school because they know that someone is going to bully them. Why would I go there? I don't want to go to school. And, and, and you start to play games and come up with excuses all the time. So one day it's your teeth. My teeth hurt. I don't want to go to school. My teeth. Another day uh, uh, it's my leg. The next day I don't want to go to school because, you know, I, I'm dizzy. And, and you start to act, you know. Or it could be severe, like in some cases some kids, they leave notes. They commit suicide because they didn't find the right support and they kill themselves because someone has been bullying them for a long time and, and there's no support system. Why do people bully one another? So let's look at the, uh, look at the, uh, the reasons why some kids bully. Of course, I'm not trying to justify, I'm just giving you some reasons why kids bully one another. Yes, bro? Um, religion? 
Uh, because someone is different, because of their color, because of their race, because of their religion, uh, bullying happens. This is one reason. Yes, brother? Jealous, maybe, like, yeah, like jealous, and maybe, like, maybe somebody has to hire, like, for example, like, money or clothes, like, friends, everything. Exactly. Jealousy is the second reason why bullying happens. The, the, the reason why I was, a, I was bullied in grade 3, because I was doing my best, like I'm not perfect, I was trying to be the top student in my class, and this guy who was competing with me was not happy, because I was beating him all the time, in, in grades, not, not physically, right? And he was not happy, you know? So, jealousy is, is one reason. What else? Yes, brother. Ahsant, good reason. Yes, brother? Exactly, Jazakallah. So, mashallah, it's, you know, I've read so many studies by psychology, you know, psychologists, and these are some of the main reasons they cite in their uh, scholarly studies on, yes? Jazakallah. Very good. What else? Yes? Okay, excellent. What else? Yes, sir. Sometimes someone self consciously try to self consciously tell them about That's good. What else? Yes, brother. Getting rid of people they don't like. Exactly, yes. For example, if someone's bad at basketball, um, he doesn't know how to shoot, and then they start making fun of making fun of him. This is one of the reasons, yes. When you make people... Yes, so Amr said, if, if they don't like you, they will come and get you. And the brother said here that uh, if you're not good at something, so they're going to start making fun of you. Right? Yes, brother? Revenge. Revenge, yes. yes. Like having fun and making fun of you, like, because like, sometimes they want to just waste time. Sometimes you want to like just show like they are strong and they can beat anybody. Exactly, just like the love island. Some people, because they don't have something to do and to kill the time, they just go and make fun of someone. Yes, brother? To gain power? Yes. Just like a lot. Yes, brother, in the back. You? Yes? Yes. Um, maybe because you have a different opinion on something. Okay, good. Yes? Most of them do. Yes? It's always because of your skin color, like black. Exactly. So now we will talk about them one by one. Something else to add? <laughs> okay, that's good. Jazakallah khair. So number one, some of us in their subconscious, by default, they like to dominate. And they like to become the hero, they like to become the strong person in the group, and they like to be seen as a savior in a, in a bad way. They like to look strong. And, and to do this, some people, they start to act bad. So sometimes if someone wants to be prominent and, you know, to, to, to stand out as someone strong and good, some people channel this in a good way. Some people become athletes, you know, running, uh, you know, uh, soccer, you know, bodybuilding, whatever, so they channel it in a good way. But some people do it in a bad way. They start bullying other people, so be they become dominant in the group, right? And they stand out for being strong and a hero and so on and so forth. And again, this is something bad, because Islamically, the Prophet ﷺ said, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, does not judge you, by the way you look, he judges you by the sincerity of your actions and the purity of your heart. And he said the strong among you, you know the hadith, the strong among you is not the one who knocks people down. The strong is the one who controls himself or herself at the time of extreme anger. Uh, one time the Prophet ﷺ told Abdullah ibn Mas'ud to go up a tree and you know, bring him a miswak, this, uh, you know, the, the, the wood, wooden brush for, for his teeth. And from what we know in the hadith, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was a skinny man. They say he was very short, 
and he was very skinny. They say in the narration that when he passed by a group and they were sitting down, they still would be taller than him, although he was walking and they were sitting down. He was so short. And one time the Prophet ﷺ told him to go up at the, the tree and bring him a moswak. And some of the Sahaba saw his feet, they were so skinny, and they started to make fun of him in front of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ was not happy. And, and he said, do you, do you laugh at his feet? Because his feet are so small. Wallahi, Wallahi, his feet in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are heavier than the mountain of Uhud. He's a great man. Don't judge someone by how they look or by how big they are, their, their big muscles and so on and so forth. Number two, as I said, and you mentioned this, jealousy. Sometimes you are jealous of someone because of their grades, they get straight A's and you get B minus, so you're a man. And you're trying to beat them and you try to become the top of the class, but you can't do it. You know, this is Qadrullah, you're doing your best, class. And what matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you're doing your best, right? So the person is mad and they try to, they couldn't beat them, you know, uh, with the grades. So they, 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 they beat them with the, with the punches, right? Or maybe they have better clothes than you. Maybe their dad has a fancier car than your dad. and They have a bigger house. So jealousy is, is one reason. And we know even brothers, they get jealous of one another. Like in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, everyone knows the story. His brothers got jealous of him. So this is something that, that is inside us. Number three... If someone was bullied, there's a higher possibility that they will go and bully someone else, right? And they think it is fair because someone did it to me, I have to, it's okay if I do it to someone else because this is justice, right? But the guy who bullied me is so big and he has big muscles and I can't bully him, so I might as well go and bully someone who is miskin, like a small guy, I'm going to go and bully them. And this will make me feel good about myself. You know, it's, 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 it's fair now. Because someone bullied me because they're bigger, I'm going to go and bully someone who's smaller than me. It is fair now. And again, this is haram Islamic. Uh, another reason why people uh, bully uh, one another is because they watch movies, they play games, and they see violence in the games, and so on and so forth. And it is cool. Like, I've seen movies, I've seen movies, Rush Hour, I've seen Tom Cruise, some of them, a long time ago. Now I don't have time to watch movies, but in the past, do you guys watch movies or movies are haram? Or, do you guys watch movies? Yes. Yeah, yeah so basically, uh, there is something called movie, a movie. Uh, typically it's one hour and a half with the titles, and they have a story, there's a beginning, there's a problem, there's a solution at the end. And, and the main actor, the lead actor, always wins at the end. He never dies, you know, because this is what the, you know, the director wants. Because as, as I said, I, don't, I know you don't watch movies, but this is how a movie looks like. So the, uh, the, the leading actor always wins. Tom Cruise always wins. He never dies. You know, Denzel Washington, they always win, right? So basically, if you watch the movies, your favorite your favorite actor, mashallah, he kills like 5,000 people in the movie all by himself. He drives a car, he is racing uh, on, on a road that is like 50 miles per hour. He's going like 250. And you will never see a police officer stopping them or getting them a ticket. They're killing people and nothing happens. It is always like this, like thousands of people literally die on the road. And, and your favorite actor, mashallah, he survives at the end. He's happy, happy ending. So if you keep watching these movies, and, and these guys who are bullying others and they're killing them, like nothing happens to them, so this is okay, like no problem, right? And when you play video games, we spoke about this uh, a long time ago. You play video games and the more people you kill, the more points you get. Ah, oh, mashallah, this is nice, man, this is good. And even innocent, innocent uh, cartoon uh, movies, like, you know, the basics, like Tom and Jerry. I don't know about the new Tom and Jerry, but 
I grew up in the 1980s and the 1990s, and we used to watch. Uh, you don't watch Tom and Jerry anymore, right? Yeah. So basically, Tom and Jerry, they have a cat and they have a, a mouse, and they're fighting all the time. They're chopping each other's head off, blowing each other up, you know, shooting each other in the head. This is supposed to be kids' movies, like for little kids, like four years old, five years old, and all they watch is beating, you know, chopping heads off, shooting someone, blowing each other. And you probably watch uh, Roadrunner and Wild E. Coyote and Donald Duck and this is what they do all day long. Killing each other and, and breaking, breaking, breaking each other's neck. And if you watch this, like from the age of three and four all the way to high school, so what do you expect? Like, it becomes like the norm, like you see it in the movies and some people they take it to actual life. They start bullying one another. And there are some extreme cases where a kid will take a machine gun, they go to school, and they shoot their teachers, and they shoot their friends. And, and I'm not making this up. They say that those who watch violent movies and they play violent video games, they're 75% more likely to act violently towards their brothers and sisters and their friends at school than those who don't watch these movies. And I know from personal experience, uh, is there anyone here from India, Pakistan? Raise your hand. Okay. So basically, when I was young, grade 4, grade 5, it was like an unwritten sunnah to watch this movie for Eid al-Adha. It's an, uh, a movie in Urdu. You know Amitabh Bachchan? Like growing up, he was like, mashallah, he was the, the hero. So Amitabh Bachchan, they had this one single movie uh, so in Eid al-Adha, we watch it every single year. It was like an unwritten sunnah to watch Shole, the Shole movie, every single Eid al-Adha. And the fighting, jumping from trains. and So the movie was basically like three hours, and they had commercials. So together, the movie and the commercials were like seven hours. So every five minutes movie, they stop like, and they play the commercials for like 15, 20 minutes. By the end of the movie, my brother and myself, automatically we were fighting. I was playing the Amitabh Bachchan. You mind my height, he was like a big guy, a tall guy. I'm a short guy, but I was taller than my brother. So I was Amitabh Bachchan, he was Jabbar Singh, I think. And we're jumping on each other and so on and so forth. Same thing with Antar ibn Shaddad, a very famous movie, uh, Farid Shawi. Or, so after the movie, and, and uh, Antara was like beating an entire army by himself, I would do the same thing with my brother. So I'm going to be Antara and then my brother was Shaibu, basically. So I go on the roof and I jump and will asra, will qatla, will garha, and takbir, and so on and so forth. So I've seen this firsthand myself. After we watched these movies, violent movies, mashallah, we got fired up and we started punching each other fighting with everyone in the house, and, and so on and so forth. So via watching violent movies and, and cartoons and playing violent video games uh, will make you subconsciously, uh, you know, behave violently towards your friends and, and brothers and sisters, and so on and so forth. So this is one negative impact of these movies and video games that you guys play. Yes, brother? Um, what about, like, gun games? What that, like, because that would persuade you of guns, what it just was well, personally, Wallahu A'lam, I think the whole concept of violent games and gang ga games and so on and so forth is not the right thing to watch. It is not the right thing to watch. Because it affects you even subconsciously. You will become a more violent you by watching these things. And again, studies have been made, and this is what they show. This is what they show. Uh, I remember. A sister came like a couple of times for counseling and she said her son is like seven years old, eight years old. He wakes up at night and he's crying, he's terrified, he's having nightmares. And I said, okay. So eventually it turned out that he was watching violent movies with his brothers. And there were people were dying and violence and blood and stuff and the kid was like terrified. He couldn't sleep at night and he had to sleep with his parents, right? And, and this is terrible. Right? So this young age, 
You call it the formative years of your life. This is where you build your personality. This is the time to explore and go in your backyard and check out the squirrels and the butterflies and the trees and, and travel and go fishing and play soccer, basketball. This is the time. So now you spend the most important part of your life when you are, mashallah, the youngest you will ever be, the strongest you will ever be, mashallah, watching video games and wasting your time. And when you hit 50 and 60, 70, like one brother came to me, 70 years old, I, I, I want to memorize Quran. Okay. What's your name? He was like, I forgot. <laughs> you forgot your name. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to do something, this is the time. When you are 10, 15, 17, this is the time to travel and see the world, do things, you know, sports, memorize Quran, learn something new. Because when you reach a certain age, and I'm not going to talk about 70 and 80, when you are 25, when you are 30 years old, you have to work, you have to pay the bills, you have to pay the taxes, insurance, you have to provide for your kids, you have to take them to school, and, and you have to provide for your family. You don't have any time for nothing. Nothing. And this beautiful age when you're young, this is the time to learn and, 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 and do things. Uh, some kids, they bully others because, uh, subhanAllah, they have some mental issues. Uh, you know, some kids are psychopathic. It's, it's a psychological thing. It's out of their control, and, and this is something they have no control over. And in this case, they need psychological assistance, right? So as I mentioned, the Prophet said, bullying is not acceptable. Bullying is not acceptable in any form. Even if you are joking, some people, they bully others because they think they are funny, right? They make fun, let's have fun, and, 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 and you know, by making someone miserable, we'll have fun. And this is totally haram. Offending people is never funny. Scaring people is never funny, right? So this, there is this hadith in Surah Hujurat, Surah 49. Thabit ibn Qais was one of the Sahaba, and this bullying happened in the, you know, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ put the Sahabi who bullied another Sahabi in his place. So Thabit ibn Qais, a great Sahabi, he made a mistake. He was a great Sahabi. So he came to the masjid, it was, the Prophet Sallallahu was giving a halaqa or something, and so Thabit came late. You know, so this happens on the day of Jummah. Some people, uh, you know, uh, they come late for Jummah, and the masjid is packed, and this guy comes all the way because he loves the Imam so much, he wants to sit under the Imam's feet. Well, if you love me so much, you have to come early. So this guy came late. Like one minute before khutbah, everyone was there, the masjid was packed, and he was jumping over people's heads and <coughs> kicking them. And so he came to the front and he looked at this miskin guy sitting in the front and he said, Yo, my spot, move it. You came late, you have to sit in the back. So Thabit ibn Qais came, and the Prophet was teaching, so he, wanted, he loved the Prophet and he wanted to sit in the front. Thabit ibn Qais, his name, a great sahab. So he walked to the front, and he, he was like in the third row or fourth row, and he wanted to sit right in the front, you know, in front of the Prophet Sallallahu So someone didn't let him go further to the front. So, and he told him, Asabta makana fajlis, you already found a spot, so sit down, khalas, you don't have to go all the way to the front. So Thabit sat down and he was fuming, like he was mad. Because I was on a mission and this guy, like, he cut me short. Like, I wanted to go to the front. And Sabit sat down and he was fuming. And he asked, who is this guy who told me to sit down? They said, so the guy said, okay, I'm Fulan, Ana Fulan. So Sabit said, oh, Ibn Fulana. His mother was like a dancer or something before Islam. Ibn Fulana, tabu manta min, min asla haqir kira, yani leib tikkallim. He said, if, if you come from a low family like this, miserable background, how dare you talk to me like this and tell me, sit, whatever you find a spot, move it. And, and he was trying. So the Prophet 
recited the, the, this ayah, لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم. So some people they should not make fun of other people because they come from a different culture, they come from humble backgrounds, they don't have a PhD like you or something. You don't make fun of them. Maybe, maybe they are better than you in, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe they have ikhlas and you don't. Maybe Allah accepts their salah and their dua and Allah doesn't accept. Like who, who are you to judge people, right? Uh, Making fun of people or scaring them is a, is, a, is, is a sort of bullying. So at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, one of the Sahaba, what, the Sahaba were traveling with the Prophet ﷺ, and they had a break, and in the break, they were, you know, they were getting like a little siesta, they were getting some sleep, you know, it was hot, so they got under a tree and they were trying to get some sleep. So one of them took the bag of another Sahabi and he hid it somewhere else. And in this bag, the Sahabi had all his information, like everything. He had his money, he had everything, his keys, everything. So the Sahabi woke up and he looked for bag like, this is everything I have. And it was gone. And, and he was looking around everywhere. He lifted every rock. He looked into every bush, under every camel, nothing. And this Sahabi was laughing. Ha, 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 we got him. He couldn't find his bag. We're having a, a good time. We're laughing. And when the Prophet ﷺ saw this, he said, what happened? They said, yeah, so I was, I was just, we're having fun, nothing serious. And the Prophet ﷺ said, you shouldn't scare people even if you're making fun. You know, you shouldn't scare people. This is not acceptable. This is a sort of bullying. I remember we had a brother in the dorm. So basically we had two rooms facing one another. In one room, we had like four doctors that were staying together. So basically doctors, one of the uh, subjects they study, they study anatomy. So they had bones in the room, they had skulls, I'm not sure if they were artificial or, you know, a real, a real skull. So they had a skull in the room. On the other room, there was this poor guy, Miskin, one of the sweetest people I've ever seen, very nice guy. Nice guy, like lotion, very nice guy. And they knew that this guy, I'm not going to mention his name, you know, like there are some people, you know, if, if, if you just, uh, you know, if, if you do something, if you take them by surprise, they like they're scared. So they knew that this guy, you can easily scare the guy. So basically what they did, they took this skull and they sneaked into the room and they put it under his pillow, right? So the poor guy... Maybe they spoke to someone in his room, so he opened the door for them. Or maybe someone from his own room, he borrowed the skull. You know, can I, please, can I take this dead guy and put it in this guy's under his pillow? Yeah, no problem, let's have a joke, let's have fun. So he took the pillow and some bones, you know, and, and, they, took, and they put it under his pillow. This guy, he came late from, you know, he was, you know, doing whatever. He came late from school, he was outside, he came late, and he was all by himself. I was living like the room after, so, so he basically came, it was late like 10, 11 at night, dark in the room, he opened the door, you know, he changed everything, time to sleep, he was all by himself, he felt something what was under his pillow, because a skull is big, it's like a bowl, and it was in the dark, he felt like something was not right, he lifted the thing, and he turned the lights off, when he saw on, when he saw the the, uh, the skull, wallahi, I heard, all I heard, I was trying to sleep at the time, all I heard was screaming and because of the echo in the, in, in the hallway, it was like 10 people screaming and I feel like World War Three <laughs> broke out. What is happening? And he came out like he was crying, he was screaming, oh, I'm going to die. <laughs> he told me, wallahi, he was about to jump from the fifth floor. He was about to jump and kill himself, he was so terrified. Right? And, and when the guys, they heard the story the, the next day, they were laughing, oh, we got you. What do you mean you got you? Were, you almost killed the guy. You almost killed the guy. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so, inshallah, we'll, uh, we'll 
we'll finish up in about five ten minutes. Five ten minutes. Then we'll have a Q and A after. So bullying in any form is not allowed, even if you are making fun. Even if you are making fun. There is this video on YouTube. People like to prank one another, right? So I heard this story. I think it was the same guy. This poor guy with the skull. Same guy. Another time, they, what they did basically was try to sleep and they put some papers between his, uh, you know, oh. fingers. Oh, and I did that. Small Ortas. Ortas, yeah. Ortas for Gley and they set him on fire. He woke up and they put some papers on his uh, thing. And, and the guy, like, he was trying to prank his wife. She, she came from, you know, the store with the groceries and he had his camera. You know, he was hiding. She came in and he had this uh, Dracula mask and when she saw him and he had the knife in his hand oh, and she came in and he you know came out and she saw him she threw the groceries and she started running and he was after her and she was hit by a car and, and she died you know and so on and so forth so bull even if you are making fun you know and by bullying people this is not the right way to do it so what happens when people bully one another Khalas, we're finishing up inshallah Number one, if someone is bullied, uh, some of the kids are bullied, or those who are bullying others, they come from broken families. And sometimes there is domestic violence involved. Like when they see their father abusing their mother, or the, his brothers abusing their parents, there is abuse in the house, domestic violence, and there is nothing they can do about it because they are young, they cannot defend their father, or their brother, or their mother. And, and they feel the rage, so they might as well take it on someone younger than them, right? So, and, and this is something they, you know, some of these kids, they, they go out and they take it to someone else, because now they feel like, I've done something. Yes, I know I cannot, I cannot, you know, uh, take it on my father or my brother, you know, because this, there's this injustice in my life, I'm going to take it on someone who is younger than me. So first of all, when someone is bullied, they feel alienated because they feel worthless, they feel like garbage. Um, you know, people have no respect for me and this guy is bullying me in front of others. No one loves me, no one comes for my help. And, and they, feel, they feel alienated. They don't want to go to school because again, like if, if you know that you are disrespected in one place, why would you go there? I don't want to go to school, I just want to stay at home, you know, and, and, and khalas, that's it for me. And of course, when it comes to the, uh, their academic level, they lag behind because they lose interest in studying because, you know, uh, what for? Because going to school and studying is, is not giving me any respect. Why would I go and study and, and waste my time? Like, it's not worth it, you know? So they lag behind. Another thing is, they start bullying other people, as we mentioned. So if someone bullies you, there's nothing you can do about it, then you go and, and bully someone else. And there are some extreme cases where kids actually go and kill themselves. Especially, especially if they have no support in the school and they have no support in the home. Right? You come from school, your dad goes to work. Like before you wake up in the morning, your dad is not there. He, he went off, he is off to work. And your dad, because he has to work two or three jobs to provide for the family, pay the bills, take care of everything, and he, on top of that, he has to send money to your aunties, Ammu, and your, his mom, and so on and so forth. You, never, you barely see your dad, and your mom is busy, busy with our, your other siblings, cooking the food, taking care of the house, changing the diapers. This, this kid has a fever, this kid is sick, this kid needs to eat. And so, when you don't have the support in the family, and there's no one to talk to, and, and you don't have the support, and the problem with some of the students, they say most of the students who get bullied, like 95% of them, they don't talk to anyone. Thank you, Jazakallah. <clears throat> Jazakallah. So, they, most of them, 95% of them, they don't talk to anyone because they, they feel bad. And, and, and maybe, I know in my culture, Growing up, if I go to my dad and tell him, you know, this guy is, you know, in my class, he is beating me. You know what my dad will say? He'll say, you're an idiot. Just punch him in the face. 
Why are you telling me? You are, you are not a man? You are not a man? So my dad will give me a hard time. And, and this is still the case with some, you know, some students. When they get bullied, there is no support system for them. Right? So they might as well like alienate themselves. They are not talking to anyone. They don't want to go to school. And as I said, in extreme cases, they might as well kill themselves. Uh, people are intimidated as I said, if they look different, especially if you look different, different skin color, different race, and as the brother was saying, if you are practicing a different faith from the majority, then some kids are going to you know, start picking on you, especially if they are watching the news, like Fox News, and you know what they say about certain people, uh, you know, Latinos, Mexicans are this, African Americans are this, Muslims are that. You know, and, and so on and so forth, they start picking on minority groups. And, and subhanAllah, some of the sisters, and this is the sad reality, some of the, you know, the sad reality, and, and I, I don't want to scare the sisters here, but in some cases, you guys, the sisters, are very visible with their hijab, whereas the, the guys, like the boys, they can blend in, right? They can't blend in. You know, so the sisters are clearly visible and sometimes they become a target for bullying and, and so on and so forth and they hear words. I'm not trying to discourage you from wearing the hijab because you are heroes. For wearing the hijab, you are heroes. Mujahidun, right? And, and, and sometimes when I walk with my wife to the store, some wine, sometimes I put on the, the kufi, you know, the ta'iyya just to show support to my wife, like she is my hero, she's wearing the hijab and she's going to the store and, and maybe a guy like will come and say something, so I'm showing support in, in, in this way. So sometimes some of the sisters, uh, you know, they hear something like a guy will come and say, oh what is this, uh, uh, what do you call it, towel head or rag head and, and all that nonsense, and they make fun of you, and they make fun of you. So basically, I, I remember one sister, she was walking in the store in South Carolina and this random lady, like an old lady, uh, she came and, and she said to the sister, uh, you know, why are you wearing this towel on your head? So because South Carolina, they call it the, the Bible Belt, so the majority of the people there are Protestants, Christians, so the sister assumed that this lady is, you know, Christian. And I'm not saying that Christians are bad. In every faith, you have good and bad people, right? So you have met people from different faith, and, and mashallah, they have manners, and they have akhlaq, and, and, and so on and so forth. I call some of them Muslims with a small n. They just need the shahada to become, like, officially Muslim. So the lady said, why are you wearing this? And the sister said, Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Isa, you believe in Isa? She said, yes, I believe in Isa. She said the mother of Isa had something like this, right? And, and the lady didn't know what to say because, you know, she, she tore her off with logic. You know, they didn't exchange fights and fists and, and punches. And, no, she said, you know, the mom of Isa, they had something like this. And I, out of respect, you know, I, I copy her example, right? And so on and so forth. So you shouldn't ask me why I'm wearing this. The question is, why aren't you wearing it? Like Maryam, the role model for you, right? So again, if someone is a target of bullying, uh, don't lose confidence, because this is another consequence of bullying, that people lose confidence in themselves. Don't lose confidence and seek help. Seek help from your teachers or the principal or your parents, right? And, and talk to them and so on and so forth. And the last thing I want to say, because this is a long topic and we don't want to stay all night and I, I don't want to bore you to death. As I said, some of these kids who are bullying others, they have some issues at home or they have problems or have been bullied. They, they have problems in their lives. And I think by just suspending them from school, if they take them to the principal's office, you are suspended for two months. This is not the solution. We have to understand why this kid is bullying other people. Maybe someone is bullying him. Maybe he or she comes from a broken family. Maybe there is domestic violence or abuse in their home. 
they have a psychological problem. So we need to solve the problem at the root, not just put a bandage on the, the problem. Allah Allah. So in the next couple of days, inshallah, we'll have the Isra and Mi'raj, and this is a, uh, a great occasion. And uh, just one thing <coughs> that I will say about Isra and Mi'raj, just a hadith, and I'll leave you with that. Uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said in Ibn Hibban, when the Prophet sallam, went in Rihlat al-Mi'raj uh, to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gave him three gifts. Because when you go to someone's house, they usually give you a gift, like give you food, they give you like a book or something, they give you a gift. And Abdullah ibn Abbas in this hadith, he said the Prophet ﷺ received three gifts in that night. The first gift, he got the last two ayat of Surah Baqarah. So this is the first gift. And the next ayah, beautiful ayat. And we know that the Quran was revealed in different occasions. So some ayat were revealed in Mecca, some were revealed in Medina, some ayat were revealed inside the Kaaba. In Allah Ya'murukum and to Adul Amanati ilaha in Surah Nisa. And the last two ayat of Surah Baqarah were revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Muhammad وسلم, directly without having Jibreel alayhi salam in the middle. And number two, the Prophet وسلم, was told if someone commits a mistake and they repent, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a high possibility that Allah will forgive them. So no matter, like, if you did something bad in the past, the door is always open that you come back, you mend your ways, and if you violated the rights of Allah, you know, ask Allah for forgiveness. If you violated the rights of a human being, then, like, say for example, you took money from someone, like, then you have to give it back, and if you said something bad about them, you have to say something nice and so on and so forth. So if someone did something bad, they ask Allah for forgiveness, hopefully Allah will forgive them. And number three, the gift that the Prophet ﷺ received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that night was the gift of salah, prayer, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Muhammad وسلم directly to pray. So we take advantage inshallah of these uh, three gifts and we study the Isra and Mi'raj, this amazing uh, experience that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had. And we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to bless you and your families and make you good Muslims, give you tawfiq in dunya and akhirah. And we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to give you success. I have questions, Sheikh will be with us.